Next, we're going to see the relationship between organic structure and solubility. Now, when we make drugs in the lab, when we synthesize organic substances, sometimes we end up with a mixture that contains the drug as well as unreacted uh, substances or a solvent. So then the next step is to isolate or extract the drug from the mixture and to increase its purity. Now, it is important to know that uh, like substances, they dissolve each other. So non-polar molecules, they have high solubility in non-polar solvents. And polar molecules have high solubility in polar solvents. So for example, um, ionic compounds, they are very soluble in water because water is also polar. But they will have low solubility in non-polar solvents. For example, salts will have low solubility in, let's say, um, hexane, which is a non-polar solvent. So molecules that can form hydrogen bonds have the highest solubility in polar solvents. So liquid-liquid extraction uses this principle that there is different solubility in different solvents. So if we have an aqueous solvent, it's going to attract all the polar molecules. So all the polar molecules will dissolve in the aqueous solvent and they are going to separate. And if you if here you have an organic solvent, all the non-polar one in green, these are going to stay back in the organic solvent because they are non-polar. So phases settle and separate with gravity depending on their affinity to the different solvents. So if we read here, it says, a typical liquid-liquid extraction consists of a mixture of compounds that is shaken with water. So this is the aqueous layer. So whatever is polar is going to be attracted to the water. And you have an organic solvent. So whatever is non-polar will be attracted to the organic solvent. So then you will end up... Uh, so when, once you shake both of them, you will end up with an emulsion. And when you allow the emulsion to settle, you will see that it separates into two different layers. Then you can collect each layer. So the top layer can be collected. The bottom layer can be collected. If you remember, we have an equipment which is called a separating funnel. So you have a tap. Normally, this separating funnel is used to do this technique. So you can have both layers, they are allowed to settle down and then, sorry, two layers, so they are allowed to settle down and then once they separate, you open the tap, you collect each layer separately. And this is a heterogeneous uh, equilibrium because they do not mix. Now let's take one example where iodine is being partitioned between an aqueous layer, so there's water, and an organic layer, and we have an equilibrium. So you have iodine aqueous layer and iodine organic layer. So from this equilibrium, we have the equilibrium constant PC, which is called the partition equilibrium. So partition equilibrium is the concentration in the organic layer divided by the concentration in the aqueous layer. And the value of PC depends on the nature of the species involved and the temperature of the mixture. So for example, iodine is non-polar, therefore it's going to be more soluble in the organic layer. So therefore a concentration of iodine in the organic layer is going to be higher. Therefore it will have a high value of PC. So, for example, PC for iodine in ethoxyethane, in comparison to water, is 760. Polar molecules 
in contrast, will have a higher concentration in the polar solvent and therefore their PC value will be low. So if concentration of any substance is high in the aqueous solvent, then it's going to be, then PC is going to be low. So this is what it means. So for example, let's see this question. So we have X that was extracted from 0 0.1 dm cube of urine using 5 centimeter cube of hexane. So this is in centimeter cube. Let's convert this to dm cube. And in hexane, the concentration was 120 nanomole per dm cube. So if we use PC, uh, hexane is to water. So we're going to have X concentration in hexane. And this is going to be over X concentration in water. And this is given as 250. So X in hexane is already given as 120. And concentration of x in water we can calculate it and if you do this you get 0 0.48 nanomole per dm cube now this is in water and uh, this was in hexane concentration now you need to find the concentration of the hormone in nanomole per dm cube in the urine sample before the extraction so if you add these two values here you will get the total concentration of x that would be total so it would be the sum of the two 120.48 now this is nanomole per dm cube now how much of hexane did we use this much so from this we can find the number of moles of x right so this is going to be 120.48 times 0.005 which gives this value this is the number of moles of x in the hexane but this came from the urine so 0 0.1 dm cube of urine contain this number of moles of x therefore 1 dm cube of urine so this is the amount of x in urine before the extraction so if we can write it now, to find the percentage of hormone extracted in the hexane layer, we're just going to take the amount of X in hexane, which is this one, the amount of X in hexane, over the total amount of X. So, as we can see, the amount of X in the hexane layer is very high. So, it shows that a simple extraction can increase the concentration of the hormone in the organic layer which allows further analysis at higher sensitivity.